Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our lesson number 17. Let's see what we have for today. Day number 17. It says show that the expression 6x squared minus x minus 15 or rather the expressions show that the expressions, there are two of them Six x squared minus six x minus fifteen and two x squared plus seven x minus fifteen are equal to each other when x equals two when x equals 2. Now the very first thing we're going to do is to rewrite this question in the language of algebra. This is written in English language. Sometimes you will see the question being posed in this manner and sometimes you will see the question, same question being posed in, in a very mathematical way. And if that happens, you have to know how to read it. How mathematicians write their language. And in, and in doing so, the very first thing we need to do is to give is to give these two expressions name names rather. Let's christen them. So here's your solution. Very first thing we have to do is let's christen these expressions. Let's call them. What should we call them? You can call them anything you want. You can call them, you can call this expression A, you can call this expression A and you can call this expression B, or you can call this expression P and this one Q, or C and D, whatever you like. It's up to you. You can call them alpha and beta, whatever you like. I'm going to call them, I don't like A and B. What should I call them? Let's try P and Q. Now don't ask me what's the difference between A and B and P and Q. There is no difference. It's just it's just a whim. I wonder if we learned this word. It's, it's not the whim that I'm looking at because that's a very simple word. But in addition to oh, we did learn it. What do you know? Day number thirty-six. What I want you to do is to go to Kashmani Prep dash vocab dash day thirty-six. Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day 36 and there you're going to learn the word vim which is as I said it's a very simple word most people know it but that was not the word I was interested in along with that word you're going to learn some some other good SAT words GRE word GMAT words which are synonyms of whim like caprice and impulse and uh, one, one, one sometimes tends to be capricious or impulsive or whimsical uh, comes so learn those words. Oh, another word that I just used was christen. Christen is the word that you see, that you will see on day number 63. Right here is the tag, Kishwani Prep dash vocab dash day 63. Improve your vocabulary while you're learning mathematics. It doesn't, it doesn't do any harm. It doesn't do any harm. So let's call them P and Q. To christen something means to give something a name. We just, we just christen these expressions. I christen this one P. And we christen this expression Q, P and Q. So now I'm going to write the exact same question. I'm going to write the exact same question. The question is this: Show that the expressions, that these two expressions are equal to each other when x equals two. That was the question. When x equals two. Now we're going to write the exact same question. In mathematical language, this is how a mathematician would write it. A mathematician would say, show that P of 2 equals Q of 2. Voila, that's it. You see how simple it is, how elegant it is, how, how, how concise it is? That's what it is. Mathematicians do not like to be verbose. Oh, 
Oh, I shouldn't have put it way up there. Verbose was the word. Now, what does it mean to be verbose? Verbose means to be too wordy. Now, when I when I when I mention this one word, when you if if you bother to go to that particular video and learn this, you will see that in addition to that particular word, you will learn a whole bunch of other good words. Day number sixteen, verbose. And if one is being verbose, one is said to have. Yeah, what's the noun of verbose? The noun of verbose is verbosity. One is said to have verbosity. Just like if one is being honest, one is said to have honesty. If one is uh, being brave, one is said to have bravery. Bravery is a noun, and so forth. The noun of verbose is verbosity. Uh, mathematicians abhor verbosity. They do not like to be verbose. They do not like to say it in so many different, uh, so many words, when they can say it so nicely in mathematical symbol symbols. I just use the word abhor, which is actually a very simple word. And yet, I wonder if we covered it or not. We have not. I'm going to make a note of it. Oh, I shouldn't have put. I shouldn't put on the blackboard because, believe it or not, I do not know how to spell it. I'll make a note to myself. Abhor, which means to hate, to to dislike something, vehemently. But oh, there is a good word. What oh, Jesus? This is never going to end. To dislike something, vehemently. Did we learn that word? So, how do you read this thing? I'm going to read this in the English language and then I'm going to read it in mathematical language. In English language it says, show that the expression P, P is the name of this expression. Show that the expression P is equal to the expression Q when X takes the value of 2. X takes the value of 2. In other words, show that the expression P, the value of the expression P when X equals 2, show that the value of the expression P when x equals 2 is same as the value of the expression q when x equals 2 also. It didn't have to be the same. We could have asked, we could have, we could have been asked a question like this. We could have been asked a question like this. In what in this in this one, this should be q. In this one, what it says is that I'm going to read this thing. It's, this one shares the value of the expression p when x equals 3 is same as the value of the expression q when x equals 7 which we do not know so let's not call it q because i do not know if they are actually equal or not let's call it some other expression some other expression that we don't know so here the value of the expression p when x equals 3 is claimed to be the same as the value of the expression r when x equals 7 you see this this these two do not have to be the same it's just a fluke here that they are the same I need the room, so I need to erase a lot of things. Let's erase the top. I'm going to erase the English part here, because we do not need that anymore. Now, how do you read this thing? How do you read this thing? It says, I'm going, to, I'm going to put this thing the way it should be read. It says, show that the P of 2 equals Q of 2. P of 2, this is how we write it, P of 2 equals Q of 2. And P of 2 means what? P of 2 means value of the expression P when X equals 2. And what does Q of 2 means? Q of 2 means, Q of 2 means value of expression, value of the expression Q when X equals 2. That's what P of 2 means. When, when mathematicians talk about P of 2, they're talking about what they mean, what it means in English language is, they, what, they, what they tell you, find the value, uh, find, find, find P of 2. If your math teacher says find P of 2, what, what he or she is telling you is that find the value of the expression P, the expression that is given to you, which we call expression P, find the value of that expression when x equals 2. That's all. So we're going to do that now.
the expression that was given to us was 6x the p was p of x was I do not write I don't not remember writing 6x squared but this is what I have here minus 15 so when x equals 2 we have to go through this expression and replace it with 2 wherever we see x replace it with 2 2 squared minus 2 minus 15 now don't worry about where these parentheses came from it came out of nowhere it came out of nowhere because look I have to write this I have to express this idea 6 times 2 squared but you see if I had just written it like this there's a, there's a chance that some people might interpret that as 62 squared if I write it like this there's a chance that somebody might interpret that as 6.2 squared and if, I, if, if the person did mean 6.2 if the person did mean to say 6.2, they would have put parentheses around it to emphasize that fact, to make it easier for us to see from with our eyes. But some people who do not understand the importance of parentheses, they do not know. They do not know. Parentheses are put in just to separate things so that it's easier for us to see. So, I, I didn't want to leave it like this. We could have written like this. This would have been fine. This is easy to see. But I prefer to emphasize the fact that 2 squared is by itself by putting parentheses around it. Now notice what happened just now, quite inadvertently, quite inadvertently. Here the parentheses was around the 2 and the square was outside. Here is inside. Makes no difference. It's still 4. Whether you write whether you write 2 squared like this or whether you write 2 squared like this, it's still 2 squared. It doesn't change anything. So, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 6 is 24, minus 2, minus 15, 15 plus 2 is 17, so it's 24 minus 17, we know that 20 minus 17 is 3, so 24 minus 17 must be 7, that's the P of 2. Now, Q of 2, Q of 2, better be, Q of 2, better be 7 as well. Because if it's not, we got a problem. Because we, we we were asked to show that they're equal. When x is two, we are told that we are we are told to show that these two expressions are equal. So let's find the value of q. Q of x equals two x squared plus seven x minus fifteen. Q of two would be two times two squared plus seven times two plus minus 15 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8 7 plus 2 is, 7 times 2 is 14 minus 15 aha! you see? 14 minus 15 is negative 1 plus 14 and negative 15 is going to give us negative 1 and 8 plus a negative 1 will give us a 7 voila! We have just shown, we have just shown that the Q of 2 does indeed equal, does indeed equal P of 2. That's it. Show that the P of 2 equals Q of 2. We have done that. P of 2 equals 7 and so does the Q of 2. That's it. We are done. We are done for today. I will see you tomorrow on day number 18. 18, 19 and 20. We have three more days to go before we are done with the first topic which was the evaluating, evaluating algebraic expressions. And once we have done that, we move, move on to the new topic which is the addition and subtraction of algebraic expressions. And once we have learned how to add and subtract algebraic expressions, then we will move on to learning how to multiply and divide algebraic expressions. And once we have done that, starting from day number 41, we will start actually solving algebraic equations, the things that most people think of when they think of algebra. But you cannot go on to that, you cannot go on to that right away until you have learned the basics of the language, what, which is what we are doing right now in the first 40 days. I will see you tomorrow. If you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email for many of these website addresses that you see, or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Alright? Thanks.